I went to the University of Toronto in engineering science for my bachelor's degree and I also did a master's there in control and I did my PhD at the University of Michigan and then I went to Cambridge for a couple of years for postdoc and in 2000 I came here at the University of Waterloo and I've been here ever since. Uh, I've had uh, four teaching awards in total, uh, a department one, uh, two faculty ones and recently the uh, university uh, teaching award. I like courses that have a uh, balance of theory and applications, which is what engineering is all about. And I couldn't teach a course that didn't have theory. Uh, it, I'm, I'm a person that's very principled in the sense that I, I establish principles and then things are built on that. But theory should always be motivated. So when I'm teaching theory, uh, say in the multivariable control course, I always start with why we care about something, some application. The original researcher was doing something important. Uh, but then we quickly establish the theory and build applications off that. And there's a, an old saying that there's nothing as practical as a good theory, and I really believe that. Uh, that it's, once you have a good theoretical foundation, uh, you can apply it in many ways. And so I think students get that, uh, but you have to really motivate the theory. Otherwise, it becomes dry and disconnected. When I teach, I, uh, I don't use any uh, special techniques really. It's, it's classical methods. I use the whiteboard. Um, I like talking in front of the, the class. I really believe people like other people more than they like technology and so I don't use PowerPoint. Uh, that puts uh, uh, slides between me and, and the students and I think it cuts down on communication. Uh, I give out notes uh, that students have to buy, which are partially filled, so that way they don't have to copy everything I write on the whiteboard, but they have to write down something. I find that works really well. Um, and I, I don't let them use laptops for that either. They have to buy the hard copy, uh, occasionally give an exception. So my methods are nothing special. Uh, however, behind the scenes I do a huge amount of preparation. Uh, once, when I was a TA, this is 25 years ago, I. I was giving a tutorial on a topic I knew inside out. I just got a hundred in a graduate course in this topic. So I was so confident I didn't prepare and I'll never forget how terrible that experience was. And so now I put in at least an hour for every hour of lecture. And if it's a new course, I might put in six to eight hours of prep time. Uh, and I find that makes all the difference. I'm also extremely organized. I have the whole, class, the whole course planned out before the term starts. Uh, and students see from day one I take it seriously. Nothing's happening on the fly. Uh, not that it, things can still be spontaneous, but it's still all planned out. And so that's it's basically organization, uh, being prepared, being enthusiastic. If your heart's in your work, you'll be enthusiastic. Those are, I think, key ingredients. And again, this is nothing new. Uh, people have known this for a long time. So I've been the capstone coordinator for the last uh, four years or so in electrical computer engineering. And these are very different courses. So there are no lectures, there are seminars instead. There are no exams, it's all reports. Uh, and it takes a different, different mentality for the students and also for me as the coordinator and instructor. I've enjoyed it a lot. Uh, the key for uh, raising standards there, because it's a notorious problem that design projects get watered down over decades because marking is not taken seriously, is to set a very high standard. And built on what other people have done in this course over the last uh, 15 years or so, we now have a set of very detailed rubrics outlining exactly what has to be done to get outstanding behavior, excellent, and, and so on, all the way down to poor. And the standard's very high. So this is laid out very clear from the first day. And I view my job not so much as being an examiner, but rather a mentor. So we've got this high standard. I do everything I can to help the students meet it. And it's very hard. Almost no one gets a 90 in a design project now. Uh, and people do get 50s and so on. So you really have to do something substantial to get a good mark. But I think students appreciate that. They know I'm on their side. We've set this high bar and together we're going to try to meet it. It's very much I find like the way you supervise graduate students, the same sort of mentality. Um, we're all inspired by other people. Uh, one of the, uh, I won't name names, but certainly there have been excellent instructors in, in my life and very poor ones, and probably they've influenced me equally. 
uh, I, I really know when I see something happen badly I remember that and I just am always thinking avoid that behavior or, or don't do that because I know what a terrible experience it was and so I, used, I think back to some instructors I had when I was a student myself and to this day I remember the things they did and I just do the opposite and I know it'll work out well uh, but there are lots of good instructors uh, I can think of myself as a, a student in here as a professor who uh, I can learn from uh, I don't adopt everything. I try to change one thing at a time. So every year I'll try to improve one aspect of my teaching. And uh, over the years, of course, that really adds up to quite a bit of changes. And I think I've improved a lot over the last 10 years. Uh, what the first lecture in any course I give, I talk to students about teaching philosophy. Like, why are we here and so on. And I boil it down to something really simple. That I, we talk about teaching and learning and the relationship between the two. And the simplest uh, equation I can think of is that teaching equals learning. The, and I argue to students, they're the same thing. And I really do believe that. It's not me teaching and the students learning. So if the, t if the students do not learn, if they do poorly on an exam, I take that personally. Like I really think that I have failed as an instructor. And it makes me mad, actually. And so students sometimes say, why are you so upset over me you know, doing a, getting such a low mark? And I think, well, it's because I, I didn't teach you somehow. Not that it's my responsibility, but it's, it's my job to help them learn. Uh, and so my philosophy is that if they are learning, then I'm teaching. If they're not learning, then I'm not teaching. And I think that helps to motivate me as well and, and, and really care about uh, the outcome. Sometimes new instructors uh, wonder about teaching and then how important that is in their career. I would say it's extremely important uh, for, for two reasons. One is the impact that you have as an instructor. Certainly your research has an impact and we talked about that a lot. But if you think about all the thousands of students you'll be teaching over your career as a professor and each one of those people is going out into the world influencing in turn dozens of people, you, you are having a huge impact positively or negatively on, on thousands and thousands of people by your teaching. More so than with graduate students, there you have a huge impact on a few people, here you're having a moderate impact on thousands of people and I, and I hear back occasionally from students. Sometimes a student will say how meaningful some conversation with me was and I don't even remember the conversation. So those day-to-day -day interactions can make a difference. Another reason why teaching is important is that you learn a lot as a teacher. It's well known if you really want to learn about a subject, ask to teach it. And if you're a serious teacher, you will force yourself to learn it at a deeper level than perhaps you've ever thought you could learn a topic. Even your area of specialization, when you start teaching a foundational course in that area, you'll discover that you, made it, you didn't appreciate something or you, didn't, you were looking at something in a, a wrong way uh, and you'll come out learning a lot. So teaching is a great way to learn as well. What motivates me to teach is, uh, it's a complicated question. Uh, early on when I started teaching in 2000, I just thought purely practically that I'm teaching a class of around 100 students. If you add up their tuition and divide by five or six, they're spending about $100,000 for that course. And I just felt obligated to give them their money's worth. Uh, and so that was a big factor at the beginning. Uh, I didn't want to give them a $10 job when they're expecting a $100,000 job. Uh, but my motivation actually is much deeper than that. Uh, as a Christian, my motivation is really driven not by the university or even teaching, uh, there's a scripture that says, whatever you're doing, put your heart into it, as if you're doing it for the Lord and not for men. Uh, and I must say, when I'm lecturing, uh, I do get the peace of God coming over me. And it's, uh, it's a joyful experience, and especially when lectures go poorly, it happens to everyone. Uh, that really lifts me up, uh, otherwise you can get discouraged. Another viewpoint is when I see the, the students, uh, you know, everyone's made in the image of God, it says in the Bible, and these people are very valuable. And so even if it's the worst student in the class, somehow I see value in that student. And I don't get friendly with or anything like that, but, but I, I don't know, I just, I, I value them. And, and I think that comes across when teaching as well. I think the students know that I respect them and value them just as people, even again, if they're poor students or they, do, they blow an exam or something like that. So I think that's my, my main motivation these days uh, when I teach.